Interestingly enough, when I came here to the museum, I'd never worked on dinosaurs before. All of my previous work had been on fossil lizards and on fossil crocodiles and fossil mammals and that kind of thing. But one of the first questions they asked me, they said, if we hire you, will you work on dinosaurs? You know, it really combines two of the things that I love most in the world. And one is being a scientist, and the other one is the ability to go traveling. Technology really facilitates shorter field trips these days. In many cases, in these countries, they didn't even have fax machines, so you were lucky if they had a teletype. So you were sending snail mail back and forth. You know, you'd get to the airport, you had no idea who was meeting you, or if anybody was. It was just very, very difficult to communicate internationally. I mean, the world's really changed over the last couple of decades in planning an ex expedition. I mean, today, you know, I can just sit down in my office. I can have, on one screen, I can have my colleagues, you know, just Skyping in from uh, China. On the other screen, we can have you know Google Maps up, and we can say, okay, like you know, here's where we were last year. Uh, we can put this filter on Google Maps to like you know look at different rock types and that kind of stuff. Because here's where we want to go next, and next, and next. The greatest fossil discoveries are not the ones which you expect to find. It's the kind of stuff that you would never dream an animal you would find something like that. There's been a couple of times, especially in the Mongolia expeditions, which it's was just really special. In 1993, when I found the, uh, uh, the dinosaur egg and that had the embryo on the inside of it because, you know, it's the old story that there was animals which were collected by people from this institution back in the 20s that they found the oviraptor, a type of carnivorous dinosaur, uh, next to a nest of eggs and they'd interpreted those eggs as protoceratops eggs, which is a herb small herbivorous dinosaur. They called it oviraptor because they felt the animal had died or perished while it was feeding on that nest. And because oviraptor means egg stealer. When I found the embryo and I could clearly see that it was not a protoceratops embryo, it was the embryo of a carnivorous dinosaur. That was, that was a big thing. I mean, that was a very, very exciting moment. The greatest fossil discoveries are not the ones which you expect to find. It's the kind of stuff that you would never dream an animal, you would find something like that. And one of those was when I found that the, uh, the oviraptor sitting on top of the nest of eggs, brooding it. When we first started getting into the game, that it used to be this idea that you know, there are birds and there are dinosaurs. The brooding oviraptor just showed that, well, here's another behavior that we think is stereotypical of modern birds, but has roots that are much deeper within non-bird dinosaur history. You've got to be ready to walk into the lab today, and if somebody's come up with something, just say, everything I've done earlier in my career is all garbage, it's all wrong, and move on. And that's a good thing.